Okay, so we just completed the uh, verification of our tool setups um, and fixture offset setups. Uh, now we want to jump into the last phase of our verification, which is where we're going to verify uh, that our program uh, is good. So. Uh, in order to do that, uh, we went ahead and we already got the machine set up. So as we're going to run our Happy Face program, um, I have two tools loaded into the machine. Uh, they're currently loaded tools 10 and 11. Uh, so we have two, two markers. And then we have our, our fixturing is established on the machine. And then our stock is going to be a piece of paper. And that's already established as well. So I've created a uh, fixture offset over here near this corner and um, stored that in the machine register. And now we want to uh, dr essentially dry run or run through our program to make sure that our, our program is correctly written and we can check and see for any errors. So the first step that we want to do when we're dry running our program is to essentially modify our fixture offsets so that we can run our program in the air above our stock and not risk crashing into any of our fixtures. So for instance, I would not want to crash into my two um, clamps inadvertently. And, and in order to do that, I'll make sure that I just modify my fixture offset such that I run the program up above all this area right here. So to do that, I'm going to come over to the controller cycle again to my offsets table um, and go in number six for the offsets. I need to get into the fixture offset table so I'll hit the space bar to get me to that. Um, with this setup we're working on fixture offset six and what I want to do is modify my Z value so that I can operate up in the air. So I'm going to do a modify value option number two. Which offset do I want to modify? I'm going to do number six, so I'll hit six and enter there. I'm not changing the X value, so I'll leave the default, just press enter. Same for the Y. When I get to the Z, I want to add, let's say, three inches to my Z value. And that should give me well above my, um, my fixed tree. So three, dot, enter. We have no A or B axes, and then it gives us an opportunity to review what we input, make sure that it's correct. If we like it, we'll hit one to accept it, which I do, and then writes that in there. So at this point, we've modified our uh, fixture offset, and then we can go ahead and dry run our program. So we'll press manually get out of here. Again, our program is, is uh, already loaded in the machine and ready to go. Um, <clears throat> So what we'll do now is, is go into and actually demonstrate using the dry run functionality. Now what this does is allows me to run my code at essentially feed rates and rapid travel rates that are different from that which is programmed. So it lets me run through it faster. Um, there's a lot of different options, but essentially that's what will allow you to do. So we'll go into the dry run option here by pressing number one. And essentially, I have from these options, how do I want to essentially modify those program values? Uh, I typically recommend that you do option 10, where you're running essentially all your interpolations, your, G, your G1s, G2s, and G3s, which are again your linear interpolations, your linear moves, and your circular moves, your arc moves, at 150 inches a minute, and it rapids at 150 inches a minute. So everything is essentially going to run at the same speed at 150 inches a minute. The other common one would be uh, 11, where you're doing your, your interpolations or your cutting moves at 75 and your rapids at 300. So with option 11, you'll see a difference on the machine when it's doing a rapid move. It'll, it'll be noticeably faster, where at 10, it isn't noticeably faster. But for, for today's exercise, we'll do option 10. So I simply type in 10 here and I press enter. You see the screen flash and that means that it, it did take that input but nothing else changed and the reason is that is that if I wanted to do other um, other modes I could program those in right now as well. I don't want to do any other modes I just want to press manual to get me out of this and then it drops me into uh, run mode or essentially auto mode at this point. 
So we're ready uh, to start running the program, but because this is a dry run, I also want to take advantage of um, a couple other functionalities. One is my slide hold feature, so I want to have my, my fingers here on the ready with the slide hold so I can pause the machine at any time and verify that um, the program motion is what I expect it to be. And if it's not, then I you know, certainly would pause it and start troubleshooting. Additionally, this is where I want to utilize single step so that I can run through one line of code at a time and then look at that line of code, make sure the machine is um, doing what I wanted it to, execute that line of code, and then just continue on through. So I'm going to activate single step just by simply pushing the single step button. You get no indication initially that it's dropped into single step mode, but when you have pushed that button, it has dropped into single step mode. And when I come over and start um, initiating the program by pushing the cycle start button, we're just going to go one block at a time. So I'll step into what I call the, the, the run ready mode. Where I've got essentially my two fingers, one uh, set up, one thumb on the start key, one thumb on the side hold key, and that way I can, I can uh, control the machine pretty easily. So I'll hit start, and this should um, go through our first line, which will do a tool change. We already have tool 10 in the spindle, so it didn't actually do that. The next line is an M19. If I look that up, that will ensure that the spindle is locked and oriented. Um, and it is already because it just did a tool change. And then finally here uh, on line six, or I should say next on line six, it's gonna move to the origin of our fixture offset. So I should expect motion at this point. Hit start and let that run over. And at this point I wanna check and make sure that that roughly looks like the location that I had programmed. Now here on line seven, this is where we really want to, to be ready and pay attention because we have a Z move. So we're going to be coming down in Z to, to get to a target value of a quarter inch above our fixture offset value. And at the same time, we're implementing our tool length offset uh, for H10. Now H10 should again match the tool that's in the spindle. So tool 10 is in the spindle and H10 matches that. So that's a, that's a good sign. So I press start, have the head come down, I can again slide hold it and I should be checking my distance to go value right here relative to actual physical distance that I have remaining on the machine. Uh, the machine wants to go another 6.6 .6 inches and it certainly looks like I have at least that before I run into anything so I can let it continue. And once it gets down there, Again, as a pause and stop. So here we are. I should be a quarter inch above my stock at this point, a quarter inch above this. But since I modified my fixture offset to be three inches above that, now you can see how I'm going to essentially run this whole program in air. So I can continue a single step until I get essentially comfortable. And I usually recommend that you do single step essentially at least to this point where I know that my um, my Z values are all lining up because that's where your biggest risk for crashing into things is gonna be. And again, you can always check your reference by throwing in a gauge. So there's a three inch, um, one, two, three block. And it looks like I am about a quarter inch above it. So I'm gonna cancel single step at this point and then just let the program run in dry run mode um, but I'll keep my finger here on the slide hold button, so if I see anything that doesn't look correct, I can stop the machine and then troubleshoot the code. So to cancel, um, to cancel single step, it just says right here, auto, cancel single step. Just push the auto button, and the machine will begin running the code. So I can see it goes, did the outside border, jump it over, it looks like it's working on, on some eyes running up to a tool change. Now note, I do have it set on 50% override for rapid travel. So that's given me plenty of time to, uh, to react. And that, that is active even during the dry run override mode. And again, new tool change. So as it comes down, it's a good idea to pause it on the way down and check to make sure 
that as it's approaching a new target value, again, a target value of a quarter of an inch, um, implementing a tool length offset uh, from H11, that matches our tool, so that's good. I need to go another 0.6 inches before it's going to stop and start uh, feeding down, and I certainly have plenty of distance, so everything looks good, so I'll let it continue. completed and uh, everything looked good. So now we can go ahead, modify our fixture offsets, and then actually run the program. Okay, so we just finished our program verification. Um, everything looks good. Uh, so now what we want to do is basically set up so we can actually run the program. And to do that, we want to take out that offset that we build into our fixture offset so we can get down to our stock and actually run the program. So to do that, I'll cycle through the menu until I get again back to the offsets page here, option six. And I need to get to the fixture offset table, so I'll hit the space bar to take me to the fixture offset table here. Um, we're going to take out this three inches that we added, so I'm going to do a modify value again, uh, option two, and I want to modify fixture offset number six, so I'll press six for that. Enter, not changing the X value, so I leave it, not changing Y. Z, this time I want to subtract three inches. No A or B axis. And then check, make sure uh, I got what I wanted, I like it, so press accept. And now our fixture off offset's been modified so that we can run the program at this point. So I'll press manual. Essentially we're ready to, to, to go at this, at this point, so we'll press Auto, which will drop us into, into run mode. Um, now, as soon as I press start, the, the program is going to run. But I want to show you uh, one more thing that you can use, one more tool that you can use for doing program proofing before I do that. So I'm going to drop back into single step just for a few lines um, before we exit out and let the, the machine just run. Um, so I'll press a single step again, and that will uh, let us run through um, the first few lines of code. The first is going to be a tool change um, to tool 10. Again, tool 10, we've got tool 10 back in the spindle, so it didn't actually execute. The M19 locks the spindle, and then uh, the move to our um, fixture offset. Well. Let's suppose I wanted to, to have very fine or precise control over the motion of the machine. If you might be in a tight spot, you might be very unsure of what, of what the code is. So you can take advantage of this thing known as the manual pulse dry run option to let you step through the machine in a very controlled manner using the MPG wheel. The way you do that is simply turn the MPG wheel. You're going to get a note right here that says press start to activate the manual pulse dry run. So I want to do that, I'll press start key, and essentially you're always going to be rotating this thing clockwise or in the plus direction, meaning positive through the code. So as I spin the dial indicator, you see the machine is moving, and it's moving essentially to get from its current location to the target location. So we've already made it to the X0 position in rapid travel, and now we're going to move in, finishing off the move to the Y0 position. And I can just spin this thing until we get to Y0. And as soon as that um, gets to that position, and I, I jumped ahead a little bit, to, um, as soon as we get to Y0, that line of code disappears, and we jump to the next line, which now takes us down to a quarter inch above the part. So as I dial this down, we're coming down closer and closer to our target value of a quarter inch. And then I can pause right here. So you can utilize this to help you step through the code to get very close, very precise um, verification of, of your code. When you're, when you're satisfied and you want to get out of that, just press simply, you can press auto and that should drop you back into run mode and let it execute the program. So I'm gonna do that from here. I'll just go ahead and press auto and the machine will uh, carry through the rest of the program.
right, so that completes the program. Um, the next phase is going to be shutting down the machine. Um, so the first thing that you want to do is uh, essentially send the machine home. So we'll drop out of run mode, hit the manual key, uh, space bar, and we've got two options for going home. We can either go through the menu system by home axes or enter next command prompt. I'll use that this time. Type HO to send it home. Start to let it get there. <clears throat> there we are at home position. <clears throat> and now I'd want to essentially break down the machine. So remove my um, fixed stream. Um, that was custom set up for my particular uh, program. And then break down the tooling and put it away as well. So, you know, in this case is simply cap our tools, remove the, remove the tool. So I'll come over to the controller, um, grab the tool holder again in the safe zone, press hold tool in and out, remove the tool, put it back in the holder. If I had an end mill in there, I'd want to break that down, perhaps a call it. Um, Spray it out, make sure I get all the, the WD, or excuse me, all of the coolant out of it. Uh, typically we'll spray them down with, with WD-40 and then wipe them down also to prevent rust and corrosion. Um, then I can drop into MDI mode and go grab my other tool, so M6 to T10. Let's change the tool to 10. Go ahead and tell it to execute that tool change. Cap that, grab the tool, take it out, and then set that away. Okay, then assuming, <clears throat> assuming that we've got the rest of the table broken down, before we turn off the machine, we want to make sure that we've returned it to the cold start position or the correct shutdown spot so that when, when we come back and use it again, we're at, the, we're at the right location just to begin to cold start the routine. And that's very easy to do. We simply um, cycle through the menu system until we get to the home axis option, option number four. And then this time, instead of just return to home, we wanted to return to home for power off, option two. And that will return it to the cold start position. So I'll press two, drops us into uh, auto mode again, press start. <clears throat> and there you go, you can quickly do a quick check of your alignment tabs and note that those are all in the right position for a cold start. And then from there, you simply would walk around to the back of the machine and throw the power uh, switch to the off position and then the machine is shut down.